the Chukach Mountains, named for the Eskimos that lived, hunted, and prospered in these barren mountain lands. For centuries, this mountainscape has been described as breathtaking, pristine, and unconquerable. Then, in 1991, a group of Alaskans had a vision. Lure 35, the world's best extreme skiers, to see if they could conquer the 50-degree slopes of Alaska's Chugach mountain range. The 1996 World Extreme Skiing Championships. Among the past conquerors, names that will echo in these mountains forever. Doug Coon. John Hunt. Noel Lyons. Doug Coombs and his second championship in three years. Scotland's Bela McDonald. David Swanee Swanwick. Kim Reichel. And Dean Cummings, who's back to defend his championship. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Chugash Mountains, just north of Valdez, Alaska, for the 1996 World Extreme Skiing Championships. I'm Rod Elisha, along with me, Sandy Santucci. And Sandy, JSP has been here for the, for the past half decade and has really seen this sport grow to one of the most supreme events in all of wintertime. Rod, it sure has. And in 1991, when this event began, the competitors were kind of just hanging out, taking some heli rides and skiing for you know, for fun. Now it has turned full circle. This is an intense competition. There are feeder events all over the planet feeding to this one right here, the pinnacle, the World Extreme Skiing Championships. Some are calling it adventure skiing. Some are calling it free skiing. Whatever you want to call it, it is amazing. Well, three days of competition, a cumulative scoring system. We start with day number one on Odyssey Mountain. This is the showcase, Rod. Odyssey Mountain has been used since 1991. Every year, it's been part of the competition. Here we see the primary fall line, and here the technical fall line. Well, just when you think you know the line, Sandy, someone comes along and discovers a new and more difficult one. Dean Cummings from Santa Fe, New Mexico, the defending champion, roped into the top of this one. Boy, look at how extreme this is. Next up, Calvin Mitchell from Juneau, Alaska. He's an alpine race coach in his home area. 10th, 8th, and 5th in the last three World Extreme. Lots of experience to get those three top 10 finishes, Rod. Another guy with a lot of experience coming off a win in Crested Deer, the U.S. Extreme Skiing Champion, Pete Bowers. Bowers looking to put two wins in a row if he can capture the West title. Likewise for Jill Sickles Matlock, the 1996 U.S. Extreme Women's winner. She was fifth here last year. John Andre from Chamonix, France, used to these big mountains and he skis them with a lot of finesse, Rod. Big, strong GS turns. Now on course with Aaron McGovern, first trip to Alaska from the Tahoe area. A lot of the first time competitors said these mountains are very intimidating. Now on course with John Dill. It's his second appearance at the World with the 95 All Mountain winner in the Lake Tahoe area. Now tackling Odyssey, AJ Cargill, one of six women vying for the Paul Mitchell Women's World Extreme title. Greg Morris, another Alaskan. Greg has been skiing the Alaskan mountains for 36 years. And he's one of two six-year veterans of the World Extreme Skiing Championship. Now on course with Chris Anthony from Edwards, Colorado. Chris really flashed Odyssey in the first day. Huge GS turns from top to bottom. He's one of the fastest runs of the day. And our final competitor on Odyssey for day number one, Dave Swanee Swanwick. The only male ever to win both the U.S. and the world in the same year. With that run, day one of the World Extreme Skiing Championships complete. Chris Anthony with the lead, coming to second, the Frenchman Jan Andre in third. The Paul Mitchell women's scoreboard, Jill Sickles, Matlock on top, Wendy Fisher in second place. The 1996 World Extreme Skiing Championships is brought to you by Budweiser, official sponsor of the 1996 Olympic Summer Games. This bud for you. And by Paul Mitchell, professional salon products available in fine salons everywhere. JSB Sports, the leader in extreme sports television. 
and by Edge Tech, the official outerwear of the World Extreme Skiing Championship. We'll be right back. Day number two of the 1996 World Extreme Skiing Championship takes us to the top of Mount Pico. First competitor on course, Jill Sickles Matlock, the women's leader after day one on Odyssey. This is the first time Mount Tico has ever been used for a West competition. This mountain is huge. And with the lack of snow that the Chugach Mountain Range has gotten this season, there's a lot of additional exposure. Add to that the thin snow cover. This is going to be a very technically demanding ski run on this mountain. Dave Swanee Swanwick, the 94 U.S. and World Extreme Skiing Champion, has developed a new line with some great technique. This is what we're going to call from now on the Swanee Line. The rest of the competitors following suit, Swanee has led them to some good snow. You can see how steep this is. And Rod, it's hard to describe exactly how big this mountain is, but I can give you a little bit of an idea. From the bottom of the road, with huge 10 by 50 binoculars, you still can hardly see the skiers on the mountain. A handful of European competitors being led by Jan Andre, second in the European Championship, third after day number one. Now on course, Chris Davenport from Colorado. He's a rookie on the extreme scene, but he has an aggressive attacking style. He really does attack this mountain, Rod. He really gets up a lot of speed, similar to the style of Kent Kreitler. Both very aggressive, powerful, strong, technical skiers. They like to both go fast. One of the few errors that we've seen here, the snow is so hard, it is difficult to fly. Wendy Fisher, former member of the U.S. ski team, sponsored by Paul Mitchell Systems, Fisher will show you the style developed with the U.S. ski team. Very aggressive and strong turn. Greg Morris from Anchorage, Alaska. Again, we've talked about him being one of the most experienced skiers on these mountains, and he truly is that. He knows how to ski for the judges. Greg Morris is going to be a factor here. Chris Anthony, the current men's leader, having a little bit of trouble on day number two. Definitely not as aggressive as he was on Odyssey. Pete Bowers launches an air. Sits back, Rod. It's going to cost him some points for the judges. He's trying to make it up, however, picking a very, very steep line. Currently in second place, our defending champion, Dean Cummings. Dean Cummings is a heli ski guide here in the Shugosh Mountain Range, constantly looking for new radical lines to compete in. And he's found one here, but unfortunately, that fall right there that you saw caused him to tweak a knee. He has to side slip down to a waiting helicopter to evac him, and he's out of the competition. That rounds out day two of the World Extreme Skiing Championship. Greg Morris from Alaska now on top, followed by Davenport and Kreitler. The Paul Mitchell women's scoreboard, Wendy Fisher now on top by a slight edge over Jill Sickles' Matlock. Two days of incredible challenge for our skiers here at the World Extreme Skiing Championships out of the way. Now the stage is set for our finals, and Sandy, before we get to the finals, let's talk a little bit about the judging. The judging is probably, next to the competitors' jobs here, the most difficult job on the mountain. And speaking of the mountain rod, they're huge mountains, and if it wasn't for binoculars, there'd be no way they would be able to see the competitors. We had a chance to talk to some of the racers, and we asked them what their opinions were of what the judges were looking for. The judging criteria for these events has uh, been pretty much the same for all six years. The judging criteria is uh, control, technique, fluidity, aggression and degree of difficulty. Each person has a different opinion as to how those categories fit them. The degree of difficulty of the line affects all the other categories and if someone's doing a high degree of difficulty and dropping into a crux that requires a second look then that's taken into consideration and you're not going to get har a harsh fluidity score whereas if you're skiing in an open face and you stop it's going to hurt you much more than if you're dropping into some kind of tight line. I find a line which I know I can ski and I'm not going to make any mistakes, yet I can ski extremely aggressively. I like to get on the hill and really attack. Um, my style is a, is a fast, high speed run. Um, other people like to make short slalom turns maybe and more in control. Just today, four times in one run, I looked for the judges. I wanted to be able to see where they were. I wanted them to be able to see me. If I'm in a shoot 
and I'm on the right hand side and I glance up and the judges are behind a rock, I go to the left hand side. I, regardless of the snow condition, I gotta be where the judges can see me or you're not gonna get a score for it. We like a, a large mountain for diversity of terrain. We like to have some powder for powder hounds. We like to have some technical skiing, rock bands, tight chutes for the technical skier, and a little bit of air time for the freestylers. And most importantly, we want the mountain to be as safe for our skiers as we can possibly make it. Welcome back to the 1996 World Extreme Skiing Championships near Valdez, Alaska. The stage is set for our final day of competition, and once again, Sandy, a tremendous challenge for our skiers on day number three. Rod, it will be a tremendous challenge. This is a very long run. It's very demanding, but it's also going to be a big advantage for the skiers because they had the opportunity to ski the mountain yesterday. That also afforded them the opportunity to watch the other competitors and see where they're going. There's a lot of strategies going on right now. Let's check out the stats on this incredible mountain. We're set for the finale on Mount Tico, the landing zone at 6,504 feet, vertical drop of 3,000 feet for our skiers, windblown hard packed snow and a pitch of 45 to 57 degrees. Rod, the skiers will be choosing at least two different ways to come down. This will call the main line and over here the skiers right the Swanee line. Very difficult technical skiing on that side. First on course for our final day of competition, Chris Anthony, the leader after day one on Odyssey, but off the mark yesterday here on Tico in ninth place after two days. Well, the difference between yesterday and today, Rod, the wind has really picked up. Add that to the equation. Look at all these, as you call them, death cookies following the skiers down the mountain. It's got to be very distracting, very difficult. This is an extreme competition, no doubt. Yeah, Sandy, if you lose your concentration on these kind of mountains, they can kill you. Next up, John Dill, sixth after two days of competition. Really got to turn it up a notch if he wants to move up in the standings and right now skiing a little tentatively. Well, I think he needs to ski a little tentatively because it's just very difficult up there right now. Trying to find exactly that slot that you want to drop into it's very tough on the skiers. Again, that wind is howling, the snow is really hard, and uh, there's very little cover on a lot of these rocks. You can't lose your concentration. You've got to keep the technique together. He's found himself a very steep slope. That will score well with the judges if he can remain fluid coming down. You get yourself into these steep, narrow chutes, and it's basically turn, slide, and check. Back to the top of Tico, and Aaron McGovern looking to select a line down the main chute. Aaron's got his work cut out for him. He's got to really set an edge, really carve those turns. There's not much snow up there. We're at about a half of what the normal snowfall is in the Shugach Mountain Range this year. A lot of exposure, a lot of rocks. Got to really set those edges and drive hard. Well, Sandy, the lack of snow changes the complexity of the event. Over the past years, we've seen some big launches, some big air. But this year, not so much. It's more the technical stuff. That's right. And I believe that this year's winner is going to truly be an extreme technical skier. Not that the past year's winners haven't been, but this year is really going to bring out the finer techniques in these skiers. Well, McGovern having a pretty good run. Now on course with Scott Kennett. You see how the wind can affect the concentration, blowing it up in your face. Kennett, one of just two skiers to compete in all six World Extreme Skiing Championships. Right here, you can see exactly how steep it is as he's dragging his right arm. This angle right here lets you know how steep and difficult this terrain really is. Yo, armchair skiers, hang in there because we'll be right back with more from this awesome mountain. Over one mile from the summit of Mount Tico, the spectator checking out the World Extreme Skiing Championships at a safe distance. On course, Kent Kreitler, third after two days, looking to move up with a strong run. I believe that this is the kind of conditions that makes Kent Kreitler ski even better. He loves to dig in, he loves to get low, and he loves to go fast. Look at all the snow that he's forcing down the mountain with him. 
Still a lot of mountain in front of Kreidler, but good technique and delivery right now. Needs to maintain that concentration. Rod, I really like what I'm seeing. Kreitler is skiing a very difficult line. He's being very aggressive. He's attacking the mountain. And as he enters into these steep, narrow chutes, he's just having a great run. Trying to dial in for her final run, Jill Sickles Matlock. Still locked in a neck and neck battle with Wendy Fisher for the Paul Mitchell women's extreme title. Jill is skiing very difficult lines. She's being very aggressive. She's one of only few women that have skied this side of the mountain, what we're calling the Swanee line. And again, as she drops in here, you can see exactly how steep this terrain is and how difficult to ski it is. See the exposure down below, some rocks exposed from under this thin snowpack. Right there, that's as good a view as you're going to get of what it's like for the skiers. A good run for Jill Sickles Matlock. Back to the top of Mount Tico for Shane McConkie, the 1995 U.S. Extreme Skiing Champion. McConkie skis these mountains very aggressively. He has absolutely no doubt in his mind what he needs to do, and he's up there doing it. McConkie known for his aggressive use of the terrain, always good at making the transitions from different types of terrain. Right now in the steep, steep chute where the snow has just been shaved off. Again, an excellent example of the steepness. The airplane turns by McConkie trying to check his speed on this slope that is over 55 degrees. Now off the top corners, this is Greg Morris, our current men's leader from right here in Alaska. Sandy, I'd imagine he has to stay mentally tough on these conditions, really pick an aggressive line if he wants to hold on and win the championship. Well, as we heard Greg speaking about the judging, he knows what the judges are looking for. It's just a matter of can he deliver right now. He's very experienced, probably the experienced skier on this mountain. But right there, he chooses to go to skier's left, which I believe is a much easier route down. And I think he's going to lose a lot of points for degree of difficulty. Trying to stay aggressive, but he looks just a little bit tired, and his technique is also suffering. It comes down to one final run for our Paul Mitchell Women's Championship. Wendy Fisher is the current leader, a scant few points ahead of Jill Sickles Matlock. Sandy, she's got to be aggressive on this run. No surrender is the key. I believe that's not going to be a problem for Wendy. Her years of skiing on the U.S. ski team amongst those disciplines was downhill. And downhill holds that attitude of no fear. I think she's got that going for her right now. Got a great difficult line, and she is being aggressive. Notice the fantastic fluidity as she quickly scoots down the mountain. Their judges are definitely going to love this line and this run. She promised no surrender, and I believe she has delivered. Last night, I just said, I kept saying to myself, now don't be too cocky. Don't think you have this thing wrapped up. You got to totally style it tomorrow. And, you know, in Crest I just thought those girls weren't as gutsy as me, and they totally proved me wrong. I mean, all these girls are rad. I wasn't that tired at the finish. I had a lot of strength. The 1996 World Extreme Skiing Championships is brought to you by Budweiser, official sponsor of the 1996 Olympic Summer Games. This buzz for you. And by Paul Mitchell, professional salon products, available in fine salons everywhere. JSP Sports, the leader in extreme sports television. And by Edge Tech, the official outerwear of the World Extreme Skiing Championship. A different perspective on the mighty Tugach mountain range. This the view of the Era Aviation helicopter pilots. Who constantly shuttle spectators, judges, and logistics people back to the top of the mountains. 2,000 miles from the northernmost border of the continental U.S., and it comes down to this. Three skiers still in the running for the 1996 World Extreme Skiing title. Pete Bowers on course right now, knows what it takes to win on the U.S. title earlier this year. Sandy, he's got great fluidity, nice turns, but really not a very difficult line. Well, when you take a look at the wind blowing the snow up into his face, I think it takes any line on that mountain easy or difficult and makes it pretty darn tough. Well, Dean Cummings went out earlier in the competition after tweaking a knee. Bowers also had a knee problem after launching a jump on day number two. Still skiing strong, still trying to dominate this mountain. 
now David Swanee Swanwick. Fourth after two days of competition. He knows the winner's circle here near Valdez. He was the 94 champion. Well, Swanwick in the past years has impressed everybody with his huge airs, and he's not afraid to jump. But you haven't seen him do much of that here in this competition, and he's skiing super technical. I'm very impressed with Dave Swanwick. He's really come back and really shown everybody that he is a great technical skier. Unfortunately, the changing conditions are hurting him. You can see that snow is really whipping up, and that's got to bother your concentration. Nonetheless, Swanwick is having a great run. I know the judges will like this. David Swanee Swanwick from Crested Butte, Colorado. Oh, judges have their binoculars out, and this is our final competitor, Chris Davenport, still with a chance to be the world extreme champion. Davenport's a very strong skier, very good technique, very nice style. He's a mountain biker in the summer on the Colorado Off-Road Point Series, keeping him in shape for this exact type of skiing. Got great fluidity coming down the upper section, a good difficult line here in the middle section. He is really attacking this mountain. Watch now, the, we haven't, rock go down. We haven't seen anybody deepness. come through that line quite as fast as that, Rod. This could be the difference right there. No hesitation, he just came right through there and did not even slow down a bit. A dominating, slashing, ripping run for Chris Davenport from Carbondale, Colorado. Congratulations to our winners. The Paul Mitchell women's crown goes to Wendy Fisher, who tops Gil Sickles, Matt Bach, and A.J. Cargill. On the men's side, another rookie winner, Chris Davenport takes the crown edging out Kent Kreitler and David Swanwick. We catch up with our happy champion. Yeah, I was really happy with that run. It, uh, the kind of skiing here at Mount Tico really suits my style a lot. Um, it kind of breaks up into several different sections. The top's fairly steep and narrow, which I like. It's technical. And then uh, down below this year, the snow is really firm, but it's smooth. So I was really happy with it. Um, you know, the snow's nice and good steep pitch, and uh, it was a fun run. Well, that'll wrap it up for the 1996 World Extreme Skiing Championships from near Valdez, Alaska. And Sandy, once again, an incredible competition. An incredible competition. I can't wait till next year. There's about 2,000 other sites waiting to be skied here in Valdez, Alaska. It's going to be a great event next year and for years to come. Well, it's been beautiful, it's been rugged, and it has been extreme. Thanks for joining us. For all of our cast and crew, we'll see you next time. This has been another wild ride, courtesy of JSP International Video Productions.